A couple of years ago, I used to work for um, a agency. And one of the places they sent me was to race courses. And because I was the only person they had in the agency who actually knew what the fuck he was doing and worked on a bar, I very quickly got put on like their top tier level of service. I was the one who served champagne. And I used to be able to guarantee basically about 30, 40 pounds in tips every single shift by exploiting the weakness of a very specific kind of person. I'm gonna describe them for you now, Brad, and for the people at home. You better get in your head a very specific image of what this person, of this person. And it's the person who's very evidently born into money and has never really like learned the value of it. And they're about in the mid twenties. You know the person, don't you? Yeah. Like, very yeah. well educated, very well educated, a lot of money on the hip, never worked hard for it, like works for daddy's company, that sort of thing. They usually gets a cushy job where they don't do that much work. And they get paid really well for it and they wear usually a very loud suit I found at race courses. And they, um, uh, and they always travel, or at least in my experience working on the champagne bar, with a gaggle of girls around them, most of whom are only there specifically because they tend to drop about £100 on a fancy bottle of champagne just to show that they can. So one of my favourite tricks was I would keep an eye out for this very specific person and I would wait for one line in particular. And once I heard this line, I would swoop in and I'd start my spiel. And that line was, excuse me, when you're free, I'd like a bottle of Moet, please. Moet, the champagne, isn't actually pronounced like that. Now, although it is made in a champagne region of France, um, it was started by a Dutch guy, which is why it has the little umlaut over it. And it's actually pronounced Moet. And if you go to Mo Moet's official website, one of the first things on the FAQ tells people that's how you pronounce it. So as soon as I heard this, my ears peak up and I'd go over and I'd swing over. And at this point, I would sell the fact I am northern as balls. All right, pal, I'll get that for you. One thing though, it's pronounced Moet. Common mistake and I'll get it right away for you. Now there are three things guys like that fucking hate. Being corrected, being talked back to by a member of service staff and being embarrassed in front of women. So that trifecta to them was like holding a bloody tampon in front of a bull. That got them annoyed. So what they would do is they do this very specific thing that only upper class rich knobheads seem to be able to do. And it's this kind of half cough while looking down to the left that just says, you pleb. You know, you know, you know the one, it's just a, when you, they hear it and it twigs in their head that they've been talked back to and it's like, <sighs> that, that exact look and I'd see it and that's when I knew, that's when I knew I've got them on the hook. Actually, um, I think you'll find that it's uh, Moe, but I wouldn't expect someone like you to know that. And that's perfect for me. I don't give a fuck. Because at this point, as soon as they said that, I've won. I know I'm walking away with 10 pounds of this fucker's money. Actually, I think I'm right. And I'll tell you what, if I'm wrong, I'll give you this round of drinks for free. But if I'm right, you give me a tenner. And most people, if you like react to something like this confidently, they back down. Yeah. But the rich douchebag surrounded by girls does not back down. And in fact, doubles down and accepts that bet, even though there's that inkling in his head of like, well, this guy's so confident about it. And remember, I worked on the champagne bar. <laughs> Maybe you know what he's talking about. No, no, the rich douchebag will not back down because girls are there. So they'll go, oh, yeah, why not? Yeah, that sounds great. And I'd say, get one of your girlfriends to look it up. And evidently they look at it on their ghost rate to the page for Moet and it's saying, frequently asked questions, how do you pronounce Moet? Moet is pronounced Moet, though it's commonly mispronounced as Moe because people believe it comes from France. <laughs> Actually, our founder was Dutch or some shit. Eat a dick, you rich asshole. And obviously, like, as well, because the guy's in front of girls and they hear this and they can't argue with the fact they've got an independent source, the official website of the company who sells it confirming that fact and they just go, look, it doesn't really matter anyway, and they hand the tenner over. And I did that about three or four times a shift and walked away with 30 to 40 pounds extra on top of each shift I did. Right, I'm just gonna lay this down, Carl. That's not a tip. It is. <laughs> that money was handed over willingly, I think you'll find. The tip is when someone congratulates you for doing a good job, Carl. Do you think I did a good job? Don't you think I did a good job of taking that guy down a peg and teaching him a little bit of humility? I used to love doing that because my like, I'd hear it. I was like a shark. I'd go around the bar and I'd, I'd, I'd listen out for I'd listen out for a, a bottle of Moe, please. And I look like if an old man said, I don't give a shit, that old man's not gonna argue with me. A young bloke though, he's gonna do that and he's gonna bite. So as soon as I heard it and I said, oh god. 
See, like, I see the ice gem haircut and the bright suit. It's like, oh, this guy's this guy's gonna fucking bite. Actually, I think you'll find anything else. No, it. I imagine if you were working there long enough, you could have got like extra bits of the patter where you're like, yeah, it's one of those other ones that people get mixed up, like Merlot or Pernod. And just wait for it. Wait, yeah. <laughs> see if he takes the place. Like, do, do I dare challenge this? I don't know. The rich douchebag is so simple a creature. Like they are, they are like creatures of habit. They re they're like zombies. They, they only act on their base urges. It's like showing off in front of women and flashing the cash. So yeah, if there are any people watching this who happen to work on a bar, there probably is a few, that's a good way to earn a few tips from rich douchebags who try and order bottles of champagne. Ooh, this is a good one. I forgot I had this. Is this the side one? No, 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 this is my fake 20 pound note. Where I used to work on a race course and my first ever shift on a race course, I was doing champagne service. And I got to a guy and he did that cool guy thing where he went to shake my hand, Slid the 20 over, said, that's for you if you look after my family. Look after him all night. I'm getting him all the cool shit. I'm getting him, like, he's getting served first. He's getting like private service, basically. Next day, go to the shop, try and spend this fucking thing, hand it over to the cashier. It's, that's fake. Really? Yes. That's, that's not a real 20 pound note. And here's my favorite bit. Hands it back. <laughs> Didn't take it off. <laughs> hands it, oh. Okay, so you're just going to give me that back, yeah. So I just decided to keep it. And I think you must remember because for a couple of years, I had it framed on my wall with a note only saying, never trust anybody. It's so shit. And it's printed on your toilet paper. So I quit that job. I didn't like working there. My first ever day I went in, that was my first tip that I ever got. And it was fake. I used to work in a fairly high class establishment. And we did used to get like, you know, a lot of like, I guess, important people in, or people who thought they were important at least. And there was one evening where we were like, it's the end of the, it's a big dinner service, end of the service, give everyone a cup of coffee. And while we were going round, like this guy, I remember it like it was fucking yesterday because I'm pouring his coffee and he grabs my fucking arm roughly and pulls it towards him while I'm holding boiling hot coffee in the other arm. Obviously, the first thing you do, service, put it behind your back. Mm -hmm. That's why people might notice I stand like that a lot. And that's because they take, like, if don't do anything behind, put it behind your back. Yeah. And I'm stood there with this boiling hot thing right pressed into a small on my back. Well, this guy goes, what's wrong with this? Like, what do you mean, sir? Goes, what's wrong with this right here? And I'm looking, it's a perfect place saying it. It's a bit messy because I was eating his lunch. But uh, I, I, I'm not sure what you're asking me, sir. He goes, what's wrong with this? And he grabs my hand and he presses it on his coffee mug. It's like pressing it down, it's like, what, what's wrong? It's, the cup is not warm. You're supposed to serve hot coffee into a warm cup. Do you know what happens, young man, if you put coffee that's hot into a cup that's cold? I went, well, it cools down. Went, yes, it does. And I don't want warm, cold coffee. I want hot coffee. Would you like me to go warm up your coffee cup? So no, I'd like to warm up everybody's coffee cup. You're ruining our evening. And I'm just looking around and everyone's like really nervously shifting their seat. And then his wife just like doing this and like, if anyone's ruining everyone's evening, it's fucking you. I collected everyone's coffee cup and I took them over to the espresso machine to leave on time. I took his cup and I took it to the fucking kitchen and I put it in the oven for a good five minutes. And I came out with like my waiter's gloves on and I put that shit down right in front of him. Mm -hmm. And I poured it and I got the hottest, I was like scalding hot water that we used to like, you know, scrub the fucking floors right in that coffee flask and served it to him. I went, there you go, sir. Enjoy your coffee. And I just remember, like, as I walked out looking over my shoulder, you did that thing like they always do, that really smug look of, like, that I sure told him. Went out to reach his coffee cup, put his fingers around, it. Ah! I was like, you fucking prick, get it. Oh, that's amazing. He was an arsehole all night. Like, he made three people cry. Really? Like, people refused to serve his table, because every time they tried to pour wine, he told them off for pouring wine. So you're not pouring the wine properly. It's like, well, we've been trained by, like, you know, a professional sommelier, have you pronounced that word, yeah. how to do this. And I personally, I'm silver service trained, so I know how to pour a fucking glass of wine. So when he was telling me I'm not doing stuff right, I, like, I know I'm doing it right. And I know you asked for have a warm coffee cup, but it was sat there on the table. You can't warm up 300 fucking coffee cups beforehand. So when I worked in a hotel, I did everything. My job was basically the gopher. It was only a little one, so I sometimes had to run the food, had to make the drinks, make the coffee. And I always said that if there's room service, I want to be the guy who takes room service up. You get the best stories out of doing room service because you get some right weirdos staying in hotels. Plus as well, sometimes you get tips. And we had a guy who ordered two sandwiches and a bowl of chips. Knock on the door. Just one guy opens the thing. Ah, hello sir. I've got your sandwiches here for you. He goes, oh great, just put them on the table over there. So I put them down on the table and say, 
Is uh, the wife here this evening, sir? He goes, oh, no, 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 I'm just here on my own. There's two sandwiches. Went, oh, yes, I just wanted two sandwiches. Oh, okay, do you have anything planned for this evening then? He went, oh, no, 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 I'm just watching the football. Okay. And he's, oh, you're confused, yes, sir. My wife doesn't like it when I watch the football, so I thought I'd just book a hotel. So you booked a hotel to watch football? He went, yeah, I don't want to go to the pub. That is amazing. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? Went, so what's with the two sandwiches? They went, oh, well, sometimes you've got to have two sandwiches. My life changed. That was like, <laughs> so I went, oh my God, sometimes you do have to have two sandwiches. And he went, yeah, so I'm just going to eat my sandwich, watch the football, and then after half time, I went, second sandwich. He's like, yes, you've got it. I went, oh my, you have changed my life, sir. Have a good evening. Is there anything else I can get for you? Well, I've got two sandwiches, so I think I'm pretty much done. What a legend. Imagine, just, there's no, you don't need anything else. He's so content. Like, I've got my, it's like I asked him, genuinely, like, you're in a hotel, we can get anything for you. Like, I can bring anything up. He's like, no, I'm good. Just so content at the idea. Because you've got one sandwich, then you've got a second sandwich. That is an idea. For anyone out there, is like a million dollar idea. Second sandwich. A sandwich shop, when you buy one, just get another one. That's horrible. <laughs> it's like when you buy a, sub, a foot long Subway before a night out. You eat one half for the night out, oh. and you're getting drunk, and then you have the second sandwich. It's like, oh, yes. Imagine, for some people, that'd be, he'd go to his mate's house, and he'd spend all evening going, oh, my wife. Don't want me to watch football. Oh, complaining about the missus. That's something. I was like, oh, no, I'd book a hotel, get myself two sandwiches, bone with chips, glass of Coke, watch it, have a great night's sleep, and go, oh, what, what done? <laughs> that, that guy changed my life. Cause I talked to him, like, oh, my God. You're my favourite person. People don't know if you know what it is. I used to work in a fancy ass restaurant, but we had this deal where it was like twelve pound for two courses, and I could always tell after a couple of years of working there, this guy who's coming in clearly can afford to eat other stuff on the menu, but he's just a tight ass who only wants to get two for twelve for him and his missus. And I go, no, nah, not today. You know what? I'm gonna upsell this bastard because he's coming in here trying to get a good deal. Nah. You can afford more, mate. So I'd walk over. Hello there, sir. Good afternoon, madam. What can I get for you? And I'd really, really play it up. So just the two for 12 menu, please. And it's like, I've got him. Can I start you off with uh, any drinks? And go, just water. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> You're not having just water, mate. And I go, okay, it's water. He said, what about you, madam? Would you like a glass of wine? And her husband had cut in. And I fucking don't like this. I hate when people like speak for their partner. And he's like, no, it's water. And I say, I'm not speaking to you, sir, and they fucking ate that. Madam, would you like a glass of wine? Like, oh, no, we can't do that. He goes, oh, you're you driving today? He goes, well, actually, no. Like, the husband drove today. Went, oh, you can have a glass of wine then, can't you? Surely you're celebrating something. Like, what is it, your 30th birthday? They fucking love that. <laughs> and the husband would always, you could see him. Well, I guess I can have one glass of wine. I said, oh, okay, I'll bring the wine menu over for you, madam. And you can see the husband like that. He's ticking. He's like, oh, I'm not having this. Go, since your wife's having a glass of wine, sir, how about a beer? He goes, I'm driving. How about half a beer then? You can't let your wife drink on her own, lovely woman like this. Someone might snatch her away. <laughs> like the wife at this point is fucking loving it. And he was like, I guess I'll have a beer then. Would you like a shandy? Because then you've got to pay for lemonade. <laughs> I guess I do, yeah. <laughs> Boom! I love upselling to people I know can afford it. I mean, you get students come in, like two for 12 that's fine, I'll do you a good deal. You come in here, you want something nice to eat with your parents or whatever. Yeah. When I've got this old fucking who can clearly afford it, and his wife has very clearly got dressed up for a nice meal out, and he's like, I'm only gonna spend 24 pounds on this meal, half of which is for me, and then we're going straight home. It's like, no, your wife has come out for a nice, lovely afternoon meal. I'm gonna fucking make sure she has a nice meal. <laughs> you know, after the meal, it's like, how was that? And also the food there is very nice. They can't really complain about the food. It's like, no, it was really nice. Because would you like a coffee for afterwards? And the husband's like, no, we're going. Because oh, I didn't realise. Where did you park? Oh, in the uh, the, like, the car park downstairs. Well, that's got two and a half hours on it. We've only been here. Oh no, you've got a you got a time to have a coffee, haven't you, madam? I spoke to the kitchen. I can bring you. Up. We've got some uh, cakes in there if you'd like me to bring you one out. We're doing a deal today. Like you get coffee and a cake for two quid. We don't. I just say it because I want to spend, spend more money. <laughs> So I think I mentioned before I used to work champagne service, I would seek out arseholes and get them to overpay on bottles of champagne. That's how I do it in the restaurant. What's the most you've upsold? Most I've upsold, uh, £300 worth of champagne. How? 
because the guy came in and he was clear like a big dick baller and he was buying champagne for the table. Well, I can get you one bottle, sir, but if you want a full glass, you should probably get two bottles. He goes, oh yeah, that's a good idea. And he goes, good idea. And he goes, realistically, you don't want me to come back, do you? Because that's a good point. So if I brought you three bottles, then I can open one at the table. He goes, oh yeah, that'd be good. I say, well, actually, we have got three like bottles left and it's the only three we've got in the building of this really expensive, like, 95 pound champagne. And I can get you that, and what I'll do is I'll do that, and then I'll get you, throw you in a bottle of wine as well, uh, for people who don't want to get, like, too heady off the champagne. He's like, that sounds like a good deal, yeah. So how much that comes from? I'll call it 300. It's like, okay, that sounds fair. And my man I remember my manager looking at me going, how did you just sell 300 pounds worth of champagne? I went, you just got to know who you're selling it to, mate. You just got to know who you're selling it to. The big question there is, were they the only three bottles? No. They're never the only three bottles. Because that's one of my favourite parts about working. Actually, it's just like learning to waffle and bullshit. Because like, I think I got quite good at it. And like, I'd do it with wine all the time. Because you get a group of like four women in. And they'd always say, oh, wait, let's celebrate. Let's get a glass of wine each. And they'd always, uh, the question that I dreaded, they'd look at the wine selection and say, what's your sweetest wine? So like, I don't drink wine. I don't fucking know. So what I'd say is I'd say, I tell you what, ladies, put those put those wine lists down. You tell me what kind of wine you want, and I will bring you a wine that you like. And That's so a good line. And they'd say, "Well, I'd like quite a sweet wine." Say, "Sweet wine for lady." I'm like, how about you let me treat you today and try something different? And they say, "A dry wine." Because oh, I'll have the same as them, same as them. It's the same fucking wine. It's four glasses <laughs> of the same wine. But I put it through on the till as something different and charge like the same price for it, but say it's a different wine. Same fucking wine. <laughs> every single time and they're trying because people will taste whatever you tell them to when i say and say oh who's what i don't even like proper sell it and i go who wanted the sweet wine like you give it that whiff the whip the, the whiff to sell it oh this is the sweet one and then when obviously they think it's sweet they taste and go oh that is very sweet try this and go oh that's much sweeter than mine i might yeah. get that next it's the same fucking wine <laughs> oh i love doing all that shit so if you ever worked it, like if you went to a restaurant and you saw someone look like me serving you and your meal ended up costing you twice as much, I'm very sorry. It was my job to sell you more stuff and I was very good at it. Hello patrons. For this month's readout, we're going to keep it quite simple and we're going to do a simple reading of names with nothing interesting happening at all. So here is the list of our VIPs. Andy Ruffle. Nix. Coffee Soap. The Fez Wearer, Sloan Rockefeller, Michelle Holloman, Susan from South Africa, Jacob Ursenbach, G, Rael E. Walters, Bubba P, Umbrella or Taino. I'm really sorry if I pronounced any of these wrong. Did, did I hear a noise? <clears throat> Joshua Knapp. Duke Schnuglis. Darth Turkey 28. Impy. Grimbacker. Hannon DOA Argove. My Shoes Hurt 69. Andy Ellis. And the, the one name I can't say, Thaney Saeed Aramathy. <laughs> we'll get it right one of these days. Kim Geishler, Ian Lurz, Lyndon B. Johnson, Tyler Mason, Taylor Brandwood, Amy Brundridge, Matt Gilbert, Nestor Aylman, Anixia. Rotoscope, Anna Goo, Aaron Clausen, Mr. Bad Boy Patch, Ziran King, Sean Watson, Kind and Plays Games, Benjamin Fridman, John Shub, Jump Jump Three Six Six, Ryan Ryder, RR Seven Five Six Seven. Seripol, Aero QC, Popsicle Tart, Samuel Chesser, Eric Toledo, Fiorelli, Fior, Fiorelli, Fiorelli, 
still such a, a wig smell. <laughs> Brina Lawless. Lousy Shisha. Jet Road. Shea Pinder. Chibisa Matawe. CD Bad. Litigation hyphen Santa Claus. Randy Reese. Cloran. Sam Bartram. Cal Tessa. The Red Oak Shield Virus. Dandily. Patrick Bratson. Binger. And last but certainly not least, Jordan Dubu. <laughs> Dubu? Dubu. Jordan Dubu. Yes. Um, so that's uh, all our VIPs read out um, in a calm, casual, you know, nothing interesting happening manner. Um, thank you to everyone who does continue to support us. We could not. <laughs> we couldn't be doing this weird shit without you. <laughs> Say bye, Brad. <laughs> ah! <laughs>